I saw something very creepy in this piece of wood. I'll show you the picture at the end. You let me know if you see it as well. Alright, here's another piece of olive wood from our friend Phil. It's about 11 long, it stands about 8 tall, it's about 8 and a half this way, and it's much skinnier here. There's a crevice over there, the bark has fallen off. There's crevices up here. I want this to be the top. There was a branch here, I saw that off. I want to get it flat so I can get it in my drill press and drill a flat spot in there so I can get it mounted in the lathe. So, let's just go and do that and I'll meet you back here on the lathe. Alright, I've got it all mounted up. I've got the live center up against it. This end is really thick. This end's about half the size. It's really out of balance. And I think I'm getting about 300 RPMs. Uh, that's about 400. That's a little bit too much shake. So 350. I'm get my face shield on. 5 8 bowl gouge. And I'll just start nibbling away. Pretty crazy. Alright, I've cut this down here to where I, I have something that will work for a base and that left this tenon area pretty long. So I'll cut that back and then I think I can get a tenon in there and get a good hold of it. I also want to trim some of this away now. So I'll do that first and we'll cut this down and we'll be close to maybe having a shape. Yeah, this uh, area here has got a lot of cracks and I had big pieces crumble off on me and I'm down to this little nub. Got big cracks here. So I'm going to get this nub off of here, flatten it off. I'll get the piece out of the lathe and try to get something in here to give it some strength. I'll be right back. Okay, I hope I got it patched. It was too big for CA glue so I poured some epoxy in it got this trued up a little bit. Now I need to work some more on these wings. It's actually getting more balanced than when it started. And I'm a little over 500 RPM so that's also better. So we're going to go back to my 5-8 sweat back bowl gouge and just start working away at these wings.
cooking a lot better. All right, I just cut a whole bunch off of right here because it just looked too square right there. So before I go any farther, I'm going to fill some of these cracks with uh, Black Star Bomb. But I'm going to do this because I'm almost ready to go over it with a negative brick scraper. And I want those filled before I do it. Okay. I'm going to go over it with a negative rake scraper and then I think we'll be ready to sand. About 600 RPMs. Alright, let's check that out. I think I can sand that out, so I think I will. Okay, so pretty apparent that I wouldn't be able to run this under power and sand it. So what I'm going to do is just hang on to it and sand it with the 2 inch disc starting with 80 grit and then I'll work up through 400 and this is what it's going to look like right here. Alright, not really that bad. Uh, it won't take too long and I'll be back and we will uh, put a finish on it. Alright, it's all sanded up to 400 and it's time to put some sealer on it. I'm definitely going to put it on the ends and I'm trying to decide if I'll put it up on the sides because I know some of that's going to get turned away and here as well. But that's okay because I'm just going to do sealer and I'll do the shellac all at once. So, I'm going to go ahead and probably brush it on. And I did what Phil showed the other day. He had his brush in a bag. I didn't have one with a zipper, but I had this clamp on it. And by golly, that's been in there for two weeks and I can still use it. It's plenty soft. So the reason I'm using that is so I can get it brushed down in here. And I might as well go around this and get it on. And I'll take my cloth and just rub it in like that. Wow, that's a pretty piece of wood. I just hope I can figure out how to turn something on the bowl side of it. It is really, really weird. This is so nice right here, I'd be tempted just to leave it, just to make sure I didn't ruin it. So I'll go ahead and get maybe one or two more sealers on it, but not the, not the shellac. So I'll see you when it's time to flip it around and go the other direction. Okay, I have it flipped around and I'm scratching my head right now. This is going to be odd. It's less than four here and it's about seven there. and around six in the middle and it looks like in order to get a shape in there I'm going to cut away all the stuff that I'm trying to keep like this little inclusion but I have to cut something in it so I'm going to start in this area and I'll go out farther if I need to so let me get a freshly sharpened bowl gouge and my face shield and we're doing about 540 rpms half inch bowl gouge
it's dull already. Let's, uh, I was going to say let's take another pass, but I know it's dull, so let's sharpen up. Oh, maybe I went too far. Oh, darn. That is right at the base of that inclusion. I got greedy. Oh, boy. Well, let's just try to clean it up. Well, it's cleaning up. It's just... Right directly on the other side of this is that nice inclusion. So, I'm going to have to uh, reinforce that before I go any farther. And, and maybe that crack. Let me work on that and I'll be right back and we'll just about be done with that. Okay, you can see I've patched a few spots with the Starbon Black CA. I'm going to go over it with my negative rake scraper. And then we should be ready to do some sanding. About 600 RPMs. All right. Yeah, it came out pretty nice. Cutting this with all the interrupted cuts with a gouge, uh, I couldn't get it nearly as smooth as I did with this negative rake scraper. I was barely touching and pushing into the wood and holding it down with a light pressure just so I could let it slide. And it worked okay, pretty so good. What I want to do is I want to soften these edges, and I think the sand deflex will help. And I'll go over this bark. some of that and this is really at the point where I think I can go and sand this with 220 going this direction here and then make sure these edges are good. I'm going to go ahead and do all that and we'll come back and get the sanding sealer and shellac on it. Alright I have it sanded to 400 and I'll go ahead and put some sanding sealer on it using the same brush Still nice and flexible. I think it's really pretty wood and I think it looks good with the cracks filled. Well that's, I think that's really pretty. I don't know if that probably looks better like that. And then I'll go over the bark and I'll just brush that in really good. I don't want to wipe it with the cloth. Okay, that just about covers it up and I won't show you putting the shellac on because it looks just like this, but uh, I'll be back when it's time to remove the tenon. Alright, it's time to remove this tenon. And as you see, it's pretty good sized. I have a larger set of jaws with dovetails and it held this piece quite well. And this piece is pretty heavy. So I've got a small block in here that I tapered to fit the bottom. I'm going to use some of the padded material. Well, unfortunately, I turned the camera on, but uh, sometimes when I press this remote, maybe I leave my thumb on it and I go to set it down and I've had it shut off. Obviously it was off because I didn't get that recorded. The only thing I can say is I, I kind of twisted my back this morning walking around in the backyard or had some stumps ground and I was walking on uneven ground and I have a sore back so that's my excuse. Well uh, it's a good thing I stopped. I looked like a crack but I wasn't certain and when I took it off that piece there was hanging on by just a little sliver 
and it just basically kind of fell off. So, very fortunate that I stopped where I did. Let me get this off, sanded, put some finish on it, and I'll be back and show you what we have. Well, it's been a couple days since I worked on this, and my back felt pretty good today, so I came out and I finished it. I will admit it's kind of odd looking. It's got a really deep inclusion in here, which I like. I really love this beautiful grain in it. It's just spectacular. There was an inclusion here, and I really had to cut that away just to put a shape on it. Some more beautiful grain there. Just amazing that grain is so beautiful. Finished the same size it started pretty much. It's 11 inches across this way and it's 7 that way and about 3.5 this way. But it is 6 inches tall now. And that base is about 4 and a quarter. And it has really nice grain. And I filled all these cracks with the black star bond and I think it really added to it. Used two coats of shellac based sanding sealer, two coats of shellac, and since I didn't really want to spin it and try to buff it out, I did it by hand with Scotch Brite. Then I decided to try the Axe Polish Restoring Paste on it, and it brought a little life into what I did with the Scotch Brite. So I'm pretty happy with that. Probably use that in my bag of tricks. This grain in here, wow, that's pretty cool. And you know, I didn't notice this while I was turning it, but I'm looking down on here, and this looks like a big toe, and another toe, and some toes curled over. <laughs> it looks like I have discovered Bigfoot. Pretty cool looking piece. I will have to say, this was a very hard piece to turn, especially on the inside. Wow, it was really difficult. If I would have been on one of them TV shows where you could call a friend, I would have called Phil. Speaking of Phil, a very special thanks to Phil for giving me this piece of wood. I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, here it is. Do you see that creepy face in there? Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I enjoy reading them all. Thank you to all my current subscribers. It really means a lot to me. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I do videos weekly. If you click that share button, you can share it with all your friends on social media. That would be great. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.